Thanks. So, um, <coughs> you don't have a mic? No. Uh, okay, we'll get your microphone. All right. And you're equipped. All right. Um, so, uh, Professor Ferdinando, would you like <coughs> maybe to answer some of the questions which are on the screen here? If Bitcoin, if Bitcoins are like gold, who issues Bitcoins? Mm -hmm. Very simple uh, question. Well, there is not a central authority issuing Bitcoins. Key point is that the protocol has enforced a monetary policy which allows for the issuance. So the origin was 50 Bitcoins every 10 minutes and then halving every four years. And halving by halving, we will reach 2040 when the last Bitcoin will be issued. Now, this might seem like strange, but it's actually mimicking the monetary policy of gold, progressive scarcity. You might know that all the gold in this world is a more or less a tennis court ball, okay? And uh, the amount of gold that we can extract from Earth is negligible. So progressively, the amount of Bitcoin which will be issued will be negligible compared to the amount of Bitcoin which is outstanding. Uh, can anyone change this monetary policy? No, they cannot. But even in this case, it's strange because everybody could. You can go home, add a few lines of codes, and uh, change Bitcoin monetary policy. The key point is that nobody will follow you. Like your node will be alone in the network because the network has to reach consensus and the consensus on the Bitcoin monetary policy is pretty much uh, unchangeable by everybody, okay? So there's nobody who issues Bitcoin, there is a protocol which, which dictates how and when they are issued. All right. Um, Philip, I'm, I think you seem to be working at BNB Paribas on, on many different, uh, you know, usage case scenarios and, and, um, and proof of concepts. It seems to be quite sometimes still before you, you move from POC to, uh, I would say, a real market application. You're, you're still uh, exploring. Is that correct? Uh, no, because in fact, uh, the, what we are going to do with Smart Angel mm -hmm. will be live in production by the end of this year. Okay. okay. So, 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 so this is a matter of, of weeks so or yeah. days. Exactly. Okay. So this right. is a real first application, I will say at least in France uh, or in Europe, of uh, blockchain that is going to support mm -hmm. this type of crowd equity platform to manage a register and to be able to deal, I will say, with uh, general meetings, mm -hmm. uh, with corporate action and this type of activities. Uh, I think Jean-Pierre this morning reminded us that one of the, uh, I would say, uh, driver for innovation uh, is to try to, uh, if you work on an idea, idea is searching for, to be better before uh, cheaper. So um, in your view, the three of you, uh, what would you say, uh, I mean, blockchain seems to be a low cost uh, way of, 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 of having a, a ledger, but what? If we forget the, the cost for a moment, what is the added value, the, the, the better the improvement it brings uh, or, the, the, or to help you innovate? What, what can you do uh, that you couldn't do before with the blockchain? I, I, Alex? I don't believe in innovation. I don't, like even, I don't even like the word innovation. Okay. Right now, the, the world is changing so fast that you have to do things or you just mm -hmm. some, someone else will. But uh, innovation at this point, and for s most of the big companies, is like going to the gym. Mm -hmm. You are fat, so you join the gym, but then you don't go. Mm -hmm. In big companies, it's, it's almost the same, it, because they, they have these innovation departments, but actually, these in innovation departments, they're not connected to the core banking, for example. If you, if you look at the startup, they don't have an innovation department, never. Well, well, some, they don't care, they don't use the word innovation, they just do things. Some people are. Uh, I, be, I, I beg your pardon, my, uh, I, I have a different take. Good. It's like there is nothing that blockchain could solve that cannot be done with databases. Mm -hmm. Nothing but digital gold. Mm -hmm. The key point is that blockchain is not a multi-purpose technology. 
is a single purpose technology is in order to make a digital token scarce and not reproducible. And it's a single purpose technology aimed at decentralization. And now the financial world is looking at it as a multi-purpose technology for centralized services, which is completely upside down. I don't think, I, I'm very, very bearish on this. It's, it's not going to work. Again, in a few years' time, we will realize the paradigm of decentralization. We will realize that how powerful the idea of digital gold is. And if digital gold is going to affect civilization like physical gold did, this will be a major breakthrough. But I don't think that anybody will remember about all these exoteric blockchain application. I mean, mini bond trading, unlisted equities, they could be traded on databases in very efficient, centralized, central counterparty solution. Mm -hmm. Why are we looking at blockchain at all? Because, in fact, uh, we are doing this already on central databases. Huh? So it's not, uh, we have been there before. So what we are using as a kind of uh, blockchain technology is just, in fact, to be certainly more adaptive, I will say more flexible, and to be able also to connect with a new ecosystem, this crowd equity platform, in order to make the link easier for them and us to make it happen. Okay, this but, makes a lot of sense. You, like you, in side chains, so you were, so it's like, but then in that case, it's like, you need cash on the ledger, because if I want to buy your mini bond, how do I pay? I need cash on the ledger. Ah. And the only cash on the ledger no. so far but, but is the Bitcoin. Good news, yeah, but the good news, the cash on the ledger is already done by the platform. That's and Smart Angel that. is handling the topics of cash on the ledger. And then we on, only receive the list of the shareholders. There's a lot of banks working on putting cash on the ledger. I, I've been working with some banks now, and, and I go today, and what do you want to do this? What's your budget for doing this? It's, well, it will take us probably one year, one year and a half. It will cost $3 million. What if we do with the blockchain? Maybe two months. And of course, not $2 million. So it's like, why? Because we have transactions built from scratch. So we have everything settled down. So why don't try this technology? Because it's just better. I am aware for something like uh, utility settlement coin, which is a consortium of few banks in London. and. Uh, I look very uh, favorably to what they're doing, but let's see what happens. I mean, I, I said in my slide that a consortium of bank issuing cash on the ledger would be a killer app, would be something really, but it's like, uh, there is an art path ahead of this, ahead of this, because it's like, we have seen this morning Steve Jobs' sentence, like, if you, don't, if you do not cannibalize yourself, somebody else will. Mm -hmm. I think this is what banking, the banking system is facing. And okay. now the barrier is so low because of this technology okay. that actually uh, the risk is higher. Alex, we'll handle more questions if, sure. if, if you want. Uh, so, um, Marcelo is, is raising a question. Uh, <laughs> what if most miners are located in a country that is not an open democracy like China? Can we trust uh, th that trend? It comes back to the question like how bitcoins are issued. Mm -hmm. ba basically, in the end, it's, uh, you get paid for being part of this network. So there's like some nodes that they call miners actually doing some work to, to make this whole network work. And then one of the funny things, it's like, it's better to go with the system than against the system. Mm -hmm. Basically, whatever the, these miners are, they make more money like going with the system than going against it. Mm -hmm. Even if they can go against the system, like stealing bitcoins. I can steal a million bitcoins, but then the price of bitcoins go to zero. So they're stealing a million, a million nothing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense at all. So yes, I, I agree that probably that's a problem. There will be a solution. There's a lot of smart people working on that. As I said, you cannot judge a technology just because the state of this technology at this point. But believe me, they make a lot of money right now. So it's, why change it? Okay. And moreover, I will add that if you look at the uh, ashing power distribution, ashing power is the way you measure the miner ability to create blocks and so to be rewarded with the issuance of new Bitcoin, has been changing in time. So it's always true that there are, it's an oligopolistic system, but the players have been changing. And I'm pretty confident will be keep changing. Now China with free electric power, 
and no environmental concerns about you know, disposing of uh, obsolete hardware. Of course, as some kind of unfair advantage compared to other regions. But it's like this is flexible, this is not. And there is also that question that keeps being voted higher about what prevents most powerful computer from always winning. Well, nothing. And this is exactly the point because the more Bitcoin is worth, the more the reward in Bitcoin is relevant, more investment are made into hardware and hashing power. More, the higher the hashing power, the more secure is the network. The more secure is the network, uh, the value of Bitcoin increases, and so this is a spiral. You know, Bitcoin increases, more miners, more security, more value, and goes on and on and on. Might fail? It might. Will it fail? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. well, in fact, the, the main issue with the Bitcoin is that there, there will be no more gold. No more gold? No more gold to mine. Uh, because you know then the mechanism of uh, giving uh, incentive to the miner will be totally different than what we see today. Sure. And then it will be a different story. Okay. So you know, so it's a kind of, of the gold rush. You know, there is a gold rush. You see the pot of money that is there. When, yes, but again, when uh, be it, has to be, it will change. It, will have to be, it has to be put in uh, in a context. I mean, every four year there is an halving of the reward, but. If every world year Bitcoin more than double, which is happening, in terms of purchasing power, the reward keeps increasing, okay? Then it will terminate in 2000, in 2040. 2040, sorry, 2040. So I'm sorry to break the news, but we will be all dead, okay? So I so might not care too so much. So you can invest now. Uh, but <laughs> nonetheless, is like, since the block is limited in size, transacting on the most secure network on, in, in the world is already increasing its cost. I mean, you have to pay a fee. I can see a future where the fee for transacting on Bitcoin blockchain might be substantial exactly. and will completely uh, um, surpass the seniorage revenue, which has been used for bootstrapping the system. Yeah. Do you, also, do you, do you think the well, Bitcoin is going to be um, backed by central banks? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. So, we have a yes, we have a no? Yes. No, no. I will love, but I don't think no. so. Okay. I will love, but I don't think so. One in the next two. five years, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think we're seeing like art say that uh, most of the banks will hold cryptocurrency. By the way, there's a question like, which one of you holds a position in crypto? I do. I do. In many, I many do. of them. I, I, I do. Actually, so. You too. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so someone is, is saying miracle do not exist, I presume. So he's not a believer, and I'm, I'm not either. So what is or could be the security problem with blockchain? Do you well, it's always the same. It's like uh, somebody owning more than half of the network and then writing everything they want there. It mm -hmm. comes back again with the same problem with uh, the mining. But then there's, there's many different type of uh, protocols for consensus. Okay, yes, this kind of mining where actually you get paid with Bitcoin to solve a mathematical problem, but then you can do uh, different kind of protocols like proof of stake, different ways like, okay, who has more to lose, then you can decide. And then in private blockchain, that, that's probably not the problem. You can even have a blockchain without a, a, a coin, settlement coin, so I don't know. Last question, oh, not the last question, but the bottom question for you, Philip, maybe less, less technical or theoretical, but more practical. Uh, Traditional fundraising crowdfunding versus ICO, which I'm not sure what it means. Initial but coin offering. Okay. Initial coin offering, yes. So what? <laughs> Initial coin offering when you put coins on sale, like Ethereum, they oh. sold some Ethereum coin in advance before actually having implemented the Ethereum network to bootstrap the system. And so you create a system oh. in which the first percentage of coins are put on sale the inception of the network. So it's a, a way of doing crowdfunding or fundraising. But no, it, they it, don't say coins, they, they say usually tokens. It's like, this is a token that my, my blockchain, my service will use. I can have like, for example, storage, distributed storage, and yeah. uh, the token that I, I will use to store anything in that, in that system. So mm -hmm. what I do is like, first I try to sell these tokens, and if people buy them, then I build the blockchain. Exactly. No, I, the the I, question I, was to Philip, so maybe yeah. you want to. Thank you. 
I, I think that uh, what we see as crowdfunding platform that we support, uh, they are mainly asking for, I would say, fiat currency. That means that they are asking to get finance in euro. Okay, so then at the end of the day, it's quite traditional. It's with the new companies that are looking for new startups to be financed, whether it is crowdfunding and crowdfunding, but it doesn't have anything to do with, I would say, uh, cryptocurrency at the end of the day. And it has only to do with blockchain and protocol in order to manage uh, the, the holders of the unlisted stocks. Okay. We're running out of time, so one, la one last question, which is uh, here addressed to you, Ferdinando, Bitcoin versus uh, Ethereum and Lisk. Easy question, right? Well, your... uh, I mean, um, the dream of Frederick von Hayek, the economic Nobel Prize, was he was very upset about the, monop the, gover the government monopoly of money. He said that we do not accept a monopoly on anything. Why do we accept monopoly on money? on that special asset that enter 50% of all transactions, you know? Every transaction is versus money. And you say the history of money is an history of inflation engineer for the government benefit, and uh, especially the monopoly is the, the speakable because has privileged us of the opportunity to try new money and to have market competition in selecting money. Now, I say blessed will be the days when from retail banking competing into issuing uh, private money, we will expect good money and not from government anymore. Now that day has come, it's not banks, it's online communities which are issuing competing money. And the best money will win, and is already winning in a way, because you might, you might be aware that Ethereum has many different implementation details and strategy and uh, goals that wants to achieve with respect to Bitcoin, and the market will decide what is better. Mm -hmm. So far, Bitcoin is the most, is the first and the most uh, reliable and resilient crypto. Ethereum has been act severely when it comes to smart contract, has been DDoS, it's months now, not working, something which has never happened to Bitcoin. So if you ask me, but this is not a fact, this is an opinion, I don't believe in Ethereum, and again, there is just one digital goal. So one of them might prevail, but if I look at the current situation, simplicity, security, and even, I will dare to say, scalability, Bitcoin is clearly the leader. But I might be wrong on that. The market will be, of course, right. Well, thank you very much to the three of you. Let's break for 20 minutes.